This video tutorial has been created to eliminate some confusion with OneNote and also introduce the new OneNote Classroom Notebook for educators. So first off, let's take a look at the two and compare and contrast so you can see what new features Microsoft has introduced in the new OneNote. And then I'll show you how to make a OneNote Classroom Notebook for your class. So in order to open up OneNote, you may see this icon on your desktop or you can go ahead and go to the start menu and just start typing OneNote. And you can open it that way as well. And you can just click and drag the icon right onto your desktop so you have a shortcut if you would like. After you double click and open it, you'll probably see a blank template like you see here. This one I've just called test, so you'll notice the name of the binder is right here. And in case you're not familiar with OneNote, it's pretty much like a digital binder. You have your tabs up top, and you have the pages that fall underneath those tabs on the right hand side. If you've ever used any other Microsoft products, you'll be very familiar with the ribbon up top and the different parts of the ribbon. It's pretty much the same layout as Word and Excel and other Microsoft programs. So now Microsoft has added some new features to their binders. So yes, you can create new tabs, you can title these tabs, whatever you would like. So typically you may see teachers put the units up here and then the pages, maybe some handouts and other things that fall within those units over here on the right hand side. But let's go take a look at the new OneNote Classroom Notebook. This is one that I've created for my CAD class, Computer Aided Drafting. This first tab that you see is kind of like a home page or a landing page for the students. And I've just created it with some general information on how they're going to use this notebook. So here's a link that it would take them to a video on the internet just to show them um, a quick video tutorial on everything that you're going to see in here. Then I give like our course offering guide um, by clicking on the link here. You can see like some of the courses that are offered within our academy. And then I have like our syllabus, a media release form, parent letter, and a safety uh, agreement form. The really cool new thing about this is the collaboration space, the content library, and then the individual students libraries, or I'm sorry, individual students binders. So within the collaboration space, it's kind of like group work. So here are some different examples of students who are contributing to one page that I made and I divided them up into rows and they had to contribute based on an article that they read. So it's a great way for them to collaborate and work together. Maybe you make some different groups and you make a page for each group within that collaboration space is one idea. The next thing is your co content library, which is kind of like your classroom resources. So pretty much up here, I've started to create some of the units that we're gonna start covering in my TechCAD class. We started out with basic saving options um, I created a page, we talked about where to save, how to save. Then we move into our manual drafting unit and you can make the pages over here on the right hand side. So I pretty much um, in the beginning of this, I created like a skeleton for them. And then as we go through each unit, what they're able to do is come in here into the content library, select anything they want, copy it, and then go into their binder they can click on their name here. So this is an, a student that I have in class. And then they can paste their actual, the actual page that I have in my content library into their binder. So it's also going green and eliminating paper. Um, I rarely give handouts now. Everything's done through this. I also do some of my grading, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, the other thing that's really nice about the content library is they cannot edit anything. They can only view or copy. So everything that I have in here are stuff that I've handed out. And then like each day that we work on something, they know that they have to go into my content library, maybe select the pages that we're working on that day, copy them, and then go paste them into their binder. And then the last thing I just want to show you is how I do my grading. Um, so, for example, I gave the students a measurement practice worksheet. So they did this worksheet 
they wrote in their answers either with a stylus on the screen or they just clicked in there and typed in the answer. And then I went ahead in and I graded theirs. So let me show you what this looks like. So now I'm able to go in and I just use the stylus on my screen and I'm able to actually physically write on their document and it'll even leave my initials after I write something or type something that way they know that it was from me. And if you just hover over it, it'll tell you when that document was modified, who it was that left that. Um, so that's one of the ways that I will also grade assignments. And if you just click the drop down list, it's um, very convenient because then you can just click on any student in your class right there and access their binder. The one downfall that I don't like right now is that it's alph alphabetized by the first name, which kind of hinders me in the, with the grade book because um, it's, our grade book is done by last name. So what I'll typically do is just do a quick printout of uh, a roster based on their last name, and then I'll just go through and write down the scores next to it rather than flip them back and forth between my grade book. That's one thing that I think they could improve on for next year's OneNote. But let's go ahead and talk about how to actually create this for your students and how easy it is to quickly send them a link because they have to receive the link in order to access this. So to do that, you gotta go to the internet, and for our school, we have a Microsoft um, suite, and we have their OneDrive. So you click on OneDrive after you click the house and go to our district's website, go to OneDrive. And then up here in the top left corner, you have all your different options within Office 365. That's Microsoft's cloud-based system. And in there you have you know, PowerPoint, the regular OneNote, Word, um, but here's something new this year. It's uh, the class notebook. And you may just have to log in. Once you do that, it's really easy. All you do is click um, create a new classroom notebook. I recommend creating a new notebook for each period because if you don't, this whole list is going to be a list of students from every single period. So I went ahead and made a notebook for each period, which creates a little bit more work on my part, but it's nice because some periods are at different paces than other ones, so I can maintain each notebook per period, which I kind of like. So let's do one together. I'm just going to go ahead and just make a random one. I'm going to call it period. Uh, let's do a period. Don't I have? We'll say period, and I'll call it nine. Period nine, uh, graphic arts. Okay, then you go ahead and hit next, and you're just going to follow these prompts. Pretty much it's just telling you that these are the tabs that it's going to create. Those are the ones that I just showed you. you go ahead and hit next. If you had, like, say, a co-teacher, you can add the co-teacher here, and then they will also have permissions for accessing the OneNote uh, classroom notebooks. The thing that's really nice about this is all of the permissions will be set up. Then you can go ahead and add any student email addresses. In order to do this, you can access them by going to your JT Learn page. So if you just go to your JT Learn, then click on the period that you would like to add it to. So let's say I was doing period one. Then while you're in period one, we're going to go to the gear up in the top right and go to site settings, people and groups. I'm going to check this box to check all the names for the students in that class. I'm going to go to Actions, Email Users. Then I can go ahead and select all of these. I'll highlight all of them, then right-click Copy. And then I'm going to go back to the OneNote and then right-click Paste, and then it'll pull up all your students' emails. For right now, I'm just going to hit Next just to keep going. Then these will be the default tabs that will pop up within the student's binder. So when they click on their name, that's the tabs that they'll see. You can leave it as is, or you can uncheck these, or you can add more and determine the tabs. If you don't know what you want to do right now, that's okay. It might be good just to leave them and then show the kids how to delete tabs and add tabs anyways. 
Then it'll even give you a preview of the teacher's notebook versus if you click on student's notebook to see what they see. And then when you're done, you can hit create. So your students will now, after you've added them to that email list, they will be added into there and they will now receive an email saying they have that you have shared this OneNote binder with them. So how do you access the notebook after you distribute it to the students and they have it now and now you want to go in and edit it? Well, if you go back into your OneDrive, and again, remember to get to that, I just went to the house up top and then I clicked on OneDrive. And then from there, it automatically created a folder inside of your OneDrive called Class Notebooks. And then here is a list of any notebooks that I've created. So let's just say I go into period one and I click on that. What you're going to want to tell your students and what you're going to want to do is you're not really going to want to edit this in the web version and you know it's the web app because you still see the URL up here. So what I like to do is just hit open in OneNote and then it'll actually take you to the program on your computer and it'll you can edit it in there. I find it a little bit better. Um, it has Sometimes the tools on the app version are a little bit different and look a little funky, so I recommend opening it in OneNote, and you should really um, guide your students towards doing that as well. Another situ situation you may run into is when a student gets added to your class. So how do you add a new student? Well, you'll have to go to the TAC and just get their email address, and then what you could do is go into Classroom Notebook, add new students, and then you'll have to pick the binder and then just drop in their email and it'll send them the link to the OneNote binder. Hopefully this video tutorial has given you some information on OneNote and you feel a little bit more comfortable with how you can use this new version of the classroom notebook inside of your, with your class and be able to make your class hopefully more efficient, more organized, um, another reason re why I really like this is because now next year I have everything already all set up, ready to go, and I can always modify, change things, and I just really like the organization of it. Really, really nice um, tool for a, a teacher and a student.